Hey guys, I'm here to talk to you about Gemini season. Uh, the sun moved into Gemini on the 20th of May and we have a Saturn retrograde coming up in a couple days as well. But Gemini, I don't know if you've heard the story of Castor and Pollux and their mom, Leda and the Swan. Well, also, I don't know if you know much about Greek mythology, but in Greek mythology, Zeus used to shapeshift. Like, this guy would shapeshift into a bull, fucking eagles, swans. And in this story, um, Zeus transformed into a swan. And now Zeus would copulate with women forcibly. And he would... Um, uh, have sex with women against their will um, and of, of their free will. So um, I don't know what it is with the gods forcing themselves on natives uh, of on the human race, you know, uh, uh, natives of uh, earth, but they did that a lot and in a lot of Greek mythology as well. Um, so Zeus transformed himself and became a swan and presented uh, himself to Leda. And then Leda... Um, was impregnated by Zeus and she had an egg with twins. Well, that night she got impregnated. You know, maybe she didn't know she was pregnant. It happened just like that. Although it was some magical shit because she ended up having, uh, laying an egg that birthed twins and stuff. There's mythology for you. But so she got knocked up from Zeus and then Lita went home and so she was married to King Tyndareus, and when she went home, he also impregnated her. So this is in Sparta in Greece, and so she was pregnant with two sets of twins, and one of the sets of twins was uh, who was born to Zeus was Helen, who turned out to be Helen of Troy, perfect beauty and all that. Um, so Helen and Castor of Castor and Pollux. And in the stars and in the mythology, they really only associate the Gemini twins with Castor and Pollux because of the astronomy being in the zodiacal sign of, or in the constellation of Gemini, there are two stars named Castor and Pollux. Um, but in the other set of twins that were born to Tindari the King Tyndarius, it was uh, Pollux and his sister, it's uh, Cly Clytemestria. So, and she has uh, a role in some Greek mythology later on, as does Helen and um, as do the twins. Because together, the Gemini twins... Together were called the Dioscori, and they were great warriors and uh, won many battles, but only one of the twins was immortal. They were actually uh, brothers, but somehow half-brothers. I don't know. I also don't... I, I wonder what the deeper meaning is, because Zeus is like the almighty, the highest masculine and he forces himself to create progeny using the swan well the swan represents divinity itself and it also represents protection and um integration and duality and that's similar to gemini so maybe the story is all about integrating you know some godlike energy or literal progeny, literal creation through the yoni, the sacred vessel of the woman. Um, you know, it's too bad they had to, Zeus had to force himself on women. But I think a lot of times women were just like, yeah, whatever you want to do to me because he was a god. I wonder, you know, I don't know if you guys believe in ancient astronauts or whatever, but you know, what if it's the gods were really aliens who... Um, you know, had different abilities based on, you know, being here on Earth or based on their evolution or wherever they came from. And uh, because it doesn't feel like energy or what we would perceive now spiritually as a god would have a drive to procreate. But maybe they see a, um, like a lineage and ancestry or a need later on. Their progeny later on will be necessary 
And going back to the swan, the swan is this, um, you know, integrating and duality and partnership. And if you look at in the tarot, Gemini is represented by the lover's card. So that's also partnership, relationships, um, the literal lovers. So something else about, so that makes me think that, so there's not two, there's four. There's two females and two males that are part of this energy. And so it's not just, you know, one archetype. It's all these different archetypes, all this different energy within this mutable air sign. And mutable means it's changeable. It's based on um, its environment. And that could be ancestry as well. Uh, so mutable and air. And air is having to do with um, the intellect. It's um, it's a powerful uh like smoke, wind, uh, it's a powerful energy, but it can be harmful if it's not grounded. And so just like every sign, there is a higher vibratory and a lower vibratory energy or capability, you know, for every single sun sign, for every moon sign, there's a, you know, if we integrate, what is the capacity for us to illuminate? The sun is there. So the goal is for Geminis to expand and balance this air energy. It's like echelons of, it's like timelines, it's like um, levels of, uh, of duality, of balance, you know, as opposed to a polarity where it's just like positive, negative. It's both and. For Gemini, but Gemini can be caught up because of this mutable air sign. It can get caught up in ungrounded ideas or extremely biased ideas. Again, that's ungrounded. So if we don't work on our heart space or work on our root chakra or our sacral chakra, we can be heavily influenced and get, um, you know, stuck in this, um, you know, a closed third eye or a closed crown chakra. Okay, so... That's a lot about Gemini, and I kind of went all over the place, but I just find it fascinating, the mythology behind uh, the zodiac and and the archetypical energy, and what does that say about us? It says something about those that were born under this sun sign, but it also says something about the collective, because collective, collectively, there is a conscious, there's a collective consciousness and there's an individual consciousness. And the collective consciousness, the la dee da -di, everybody, is experiencing this energy at this time. And it's extra, extra powerful and potent this year, 2021, because of the um, nodes of the moon, the north and south node, are in. Uh, north node is in Gemini and south node is in Sagittarius. And I'll do another video on what the nodes mean. But basically, it's a very karmic forward moving energy that is, you know, clearing out the old and welcoming in the new, having to do with Gemini energy, this higher vibratory. So it's basically releasing old belief patterns, but if you don't release, it can be super painful for you. So I'll do another video on the, um, the eclipses and the nodes, um, and I'll do that rather quickly because that's on that's next week on the 26th of May. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something, and I hope it resonated with you. Uh, let me know if you knew about Leda and the Swan, or about that Greek mythology. Um, and you know, it's interesting that only the males are uh, named in the stars too. Fucking patriarchy, <laughs> but. Let me know um, how your eclipse season is going as well, okay? Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and share. Thank you.